we are going to examine the histology of the adrenal gland. Now, the adrenal gland are, is a paired set of glands. They reside on top of each of your kidneys, or just superior to the kidneys, and they are made of two main regions. The outer area of the adrenal gland is known as the adrenal cortex, and the central region is known as the adrenal medulla. Now the entire gland has a covering of connective tissue around it known as the capsule. Here in this photo, you're looking at a microscopic image of the adrenal gland, and we can see the capsule here on the outer edge. It's that light pink covering. It goes all the way around the gland. You can kind of see it um, encircling the entire gland. And again, that is fibrous connective tissue. It's just a supporting tissue that surrounds the adrenal gland. Just underneath the capsule, we begin the adrenal cortex. Now there are three zones within the adrenal cortex. The zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and the zona reticularis. The glomerulosa resides just underneath the capsule, and it's actually quite a thin layer. It's this lighter region here, just underneath the capsule. And these layers are very subtle as they change, so you really have to look closely. But if you examine that photo, you can see there's some differences in the pattern of cells and also in the coloration of the cells that are there. That zona glomerulosa, just remember that it's always just underneath the capsule, okay? So that zona glomerulosa. Now this secretes aldosterone. Aldosterone is a type of hormone. It's in a, a category called mineral corticoids. And aldosterone's main purpose is to increase sodium levels. Its main target organ is the kidneys, and it causes the kidneys to absorb more sodium back into the bloodstream. And wherever sodium goes, water will follow. So if we're increasing sodium and increasing salt, then that means we're also gonna increase water. Where one goes, the other will follow. So in a roundabout way, aldosterone can also play a role in regulating blood pressure because an increase in sodium will increase water, that increases blood volume, so essentially your pressure will rise as a result too. Just underneath the zona glomerulosa, we see the zona fasciculata, and the pattern of cells changes a little bit as we enter the zona fasciculata. This region here is what we would call the zona fasciculata, and it secretes a group of hormones known as the glucocorticoids. Probably the most famous glucocorticoids that you're familiar with might be cortisol. You've probably heard of cortisone as well. These are hormones that increase sugar levels that um, allow you to deal with long-term stressors. So in times of long-term stress, which by definition is anything greater than three months. So a long-term stressor could be something like your job, school, pregnancy is a long-term stressor, your children, your spouse, um, many things could be categorized as a long-term stressor. And if it stresses your body um, to the point where we have to increase protein breakdown, fat breakdown, keep those sugar levels and energy levels high to help you deal with that, long, with that stressor, that's what we deem as a long-term stressor. And it's regulated and controlled by these glucocorticoids secreted by the zona fasciculata. Now, if this long-term stressor continues, it can actually have a negative impact on the body. It can cause a, a suppression of the immune system. That's why when you're stressed out, you're actually more likely to get sick because it hinders your immune system when you're stressed out. So that zona fasciculata is um, secreting cortisol, cortisone. There is another uh, hormone called corticosterone. They all help to increase the sugar levels increase protein breakdown, um, fat breakdown, in order to help your body deal with this long-term stressor. Just below the zona fasciculata is the zona reticularis. Now we can see the cells start to get a little bit darker as we go deeper. This area here is what we would call the zona reticularis. 
The zona reticularis secretes a hormone called DHEA, and it's an androgen, meaning it's a male hormone. Both males and females secrete DHEA. And in fact, some of that hormone is converted into estrogen, both in males and females. So what that means is females have male and female hormones, and males have male and female hormones. We have a little bit of both, no matter what your gender may be. Um, so that zona reticularis helps to secrete and supplement sex hormones that um, play a role in various activities in the body. Now these three zones collectively form what's called the adrenal cortex. So I'm gonna uh, draw a bracket in this area here from the glomerulosa into the zona reticularis and this area, these three zones, collectively form the adrenal cortex. I'm gonna move that term to there. So zona glomerulosa for aldosterone, zona fasciculata for that cortisol cortisone, and then zona reticularis, which is the androgen, the male hormone DHEA. Collectively, all three of these regions com comprise the adrenal cortex. Now in the center, where you see this separation begin to take place, right about where that microscope pointer is, this area is known as the adrenal medulla. The adrenal medulla, and I'm gonna draw a dotted line around this area, it is just underneath the zona reticularis. You can kinda of see this pattern of cells changes ever so slightly, but there is a pattern change of the cells here in the middle. This region is what we would call the adrenal medulla. And the adrenal medulla secretes that infamous adrenaline. You've heard of someone getting that adrenaline rush during a time of an emergency or when they're excited or maybe embarrassed. This is part of a, an area in the nervous system known as the sympathetic nervous system, which helps your body deal with short-term stressors. So that adrenal medulla secretes adrenaline. Now in anatomy and physiology, we refer to this hormone as epinephrine. You've heard, probably heard of an EpiPen before. And uh, epinephrine, and there's another form called norepinephrine or noradrenaline. These collectively are the two main hormones that help your body deal with short-term stressors. So the adrenal cortex is the outer zone with the zona glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis. And then directly in the center here of that adrenal gland is the adrenal medulla, which secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine in response to short-term stressors or an emergency situation. Now on test, I will ask you to identify these regions. So you really have to have a trained eye. So spend some time studying this image and be able to pick out those subtle differences in the zones. I'm gonna draw some dotted lines up here at the top just to help you pick out the different regions. So up here at the top, of course we know the capsule, right? That capsule is gonna be this outer layer right here. Then there's a very thin region here, which is the glomerulosa. And then we see the fasciculata right here, which is much deeper, thicker than what the glomerulosa is. The glomerulosa is quite thin, fasciculata a bit deeper, and then as it gets dark, down here at the bottom, we're hitting the zona reticularis. So I'm gonna draw arrows pointing upward. Glomerulosa up here, fasciculata in this region, and then reticularis in this region. And then everything in the very center, right around where that separation is, almost like a little lake or a river in the middle, all those cells around that area, that's part of the adrenal medulla, which is secreting epinephrine, okay? Now, on test, I'm not gonna have these dotted lines for you. You have to be able to look at this image and pick out those zones. So again, spend some time kind of training your eye to pick out these various regions. And if nothing else, go by location. Again, glomerulosa right underneath the capsule. Fasciculata next, reticularis next, medulla in the middle. Learn them in order, that will be helpful as well.